Folks, before we start this episode, if you could do one thing, would you please hit that subscribe button? It really helps us out. Kick those tires and start that fake fire. It's time to camp, albeit shortly today. Today we welcome the former bachelor to the rapture, a man who is hosting Hope Still Wins, and there is still hope, unless you hope to marry him, because sadly that is not for anyone else except for his fiancee. Benjamin Higgins, the bachelor himself, here with us by the fire. Mm. Ben, thanks for being here, man. It's nice. Right? Feels good. Nice and toasty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I will say I was a bit intimidated to know we would welcome another six foot four guest here, but um, I've made peace with it. And um, I listened to an interview where you said we have to accept that um, we're all just not that special. You know, try and name the most important person 150 years ago. Yeah. And I couldn't think of anyone. I was like, I'm sure the president was important, but you yeah. Know. Point proven. That's right. You know, so. Anyways, well, since we're on a shorter camping schedule today, mm -hmm. inclement weather. Yeah. Weather is delayed. You know, we have to go to the mountains after this. Another set of mountains. How are things going right now, man? Right now, things are, uh, man, it's a it's a really good season of life. I'm getting ready to get married. Congrats. Um, I'm repurposing, refocusing life a bit, learning a ton. Uh, I would be, if I'm honest, it's not the most fun season of life. Like this isn't a season I wish upon myself or anybody, but it's a good season. Except for this bus interview right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it makes interesting, you know, conversation, but it's a very much of a, of kind of a, a limbo season in a lot of ways. Hmm. Liminal space, a lot of liminal space in my life right now. Yeah. You opened up a little bit and I, I think I saw this on a people mm -hmm. article, um, which, you know, after I was done reading scientific American. Yeah. I glanced and people said, and um, you were being really open and honest about just um, some mental health and just finding peace right now and taking some time off and tell us a little bit what's going on. Well, a couple of things have happened in my life. One is I went from being like just living life and trying to figure it all out to kind of be thrust into a whole new world, a whole new spotlight. And one of the things that happened during that time was that the more vulnerable I became and the more authentic I became and the more I actually tried to stay in touch with my heaviest emotions uh the more not only relatable i would get with others but the more i allowed me to kind of free myself up from the, some of these pains and sorrows and so um i'm in a season right now where i'm getting married super excited about it very very confident in this new chapter of life there but by getting married i'm i'm releasing the last five years of my life i've been best known as a bachelor for five years and maybe even before that uh, with that also, you know, I had in 2019, I started three restaurants and two coffee shops, 2020 hit, nobody shows up because really they can't. Right. And so then you have all of this that you've worked on kind of sitting there and just falling down around you career wise. Uh, and so, and then I have a book, you know, I've been working on a book for two years. It comes out in February, right in the middle of all of this. And nobody, I mean, you know, I haven't done a, I still have not done a live book signing or speaking event from it yet. And so it kind of made me for a period of time feel like everything I was doing was falling down around me. But yet I still had this engagement and this wonderful partner in Jessica that I was getting ready to get excited for. Uh, but it felt like I needed to change my perspective. It felt like the attention I was receiving for years wasn't there uh, anymore. And I had to kind of come to terms with that. Hmm. And so did, it, did everything, did something culminate or was there a sort of a boiling point where you're just like, okay, I need to take a step back and sort of recalibrate? Uh, I don't think it's a boiling point for me as much as like I can feel it coming. Okay. Uh, I've tried in the last few years to do a bunch of work on understanding myself better, uh, trying to get in touch with where I'm at in life. Like if I'm being reactive to things or if I'm irritable, why is that? Like where is that coming from? And so I could see the 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 uh, themes start to arise. I was, uh, you know, a little bit more like like I said, irritable. I was less passionate. I was tired a lot more. I was finding myself disconnecting from friendships and family. Uh, and so when those themes start happening, I start have to, I have to ask myself, where is this coming from? And that's when I realized over time that like I was entering into a new season, maybe an unhealthy season that I had to start paying attention to. Hmm. So 
I know you get asked a lot of questions about The Bachelor, obviously, and that experience in general, but I'm just curious, what is your now sort of take on just reality TV in general, now having been through it and now coming out on the other side of it and wrestling with the the blessing in that it gave you a platform mm -hmm. and it gives you a voice and it puts you on the map and uh, I imagine provides some great economic benefits, but also the i'm sure there's other sides of that where you get thrust into the limelight and people who have no idea who you are are judging and criticizing mm -hmm. and evaluating that um how has all that kind of contributed to where you're at now and your view on you know whether you should have done the show at not at all I, I guess you know four years out now kind of five years out now how are we feeling about everything oh i mean that show has been one of the greatest gifts if not the greatest gift that i've ever received from another person i mean it has and you said it uh, I would like to imagine, and, and one of the things I like to talk about now is just how all of us have a voice and all of us can make an impact. Uh, I was up speaking at a church three years ago and I was standing in front of the group and all of a sudden like this, like my mind told me a message. Uh, I said, isn't it funny? And I said it to the group, I was like, I just realized that it's funny that I've always had very similar passions and very similar values, but yet I go on a reality television show and now all of a sudden I'm standing up talking to you and you want to hear what I have to say. Um, hmm. isn't that interesting? And so the show is, has been a great thing for me, uh, in a lot of ways. However, there's been some also lessons learned. Um, fame is not fulfilling. Uh, it's something that I've learned the hard way is that the, the more I've tried to stay relevant or if I've ever chased, uh, fame at any level, I've lost myself in the process and it's left me feeling empty. And so, uh, that hasn't been a gift, um, but it's allowed me to hopefully have a better perspective of why people, when people are pursuing fame, how to relate with them more, how to speak into their hearts, how to tell them that, hey, it's great that you want opportunity and it's great that you want to be successful and it's great that you want to be heard and have a seat at the table. However, uh, I think there's there has to be a question beyond that of like, why is those, why are those the things you're pursuing and what is it when you get to that point? What is it that you're going to use that for? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm not I don't regret the show at all. I'm very thankful for it. It's not a piece of my legacy or identity now. Uh, it's helped me get to this point and I hope this you know my life from here on out will kind of build on that gift that was a platform that was really handed to me overnight mm. and you would put this bus interview in that same category uh, yeah well let's wait four years that's right I and mean, then I'll answer that question there will be no way to quantify yeah. the impact this has on your life mm -hmm. so I'm curious so I'll admit I've never seen The Bachelor um, I actually couldn't emotionally stand to watch it um, after they chose you know, they spurned me and, you know, obviously I yeah. should have been the bachelor. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm same height as you and I imagine we're equal in every way. So, um, it's just too painful, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've always, I've looked at it and clearly it has to be made for TV. So they have to, they're great at cutting scenes. They're great at, you know, they have to, they have to leave, you know, just to leave you at a promo, right? You have to be ready for like to want to come back. Right. But I'm curious when you're on that show, is it, are you having fun in the moment or is it also very stressful? Oh, I don't know if I had fun at any point. Like, okay, I don't know so if any of that would be like, oh, I want to go back to that moment that I was having that much fun. Uh, I don't remember it being fun. I remember being stressful. I remember it a lot of times feeling like a job, but also knowing that at the end there could be some romantic benefit of it. Like you might find somebody through it, but also it's very clear, especially when you are the bachelor that you uh, you're carrying the weight of a pretty large show um, and a show that has a lot of impact on the network. So you're doing your best to say, stay authentic with yourself and authentic with the experience while at the same time knowing that there's still a show being created. That was stressful for me uh, and it's tiring. It's long hours. You're up at 7.30 in the morning, you're to bed at one to two you know, in the morning and uh, it's 40, you know, 40 plus days straight uh, it's, it's exhausting. And, uh, yeah. So I, I don't know if I would say, Oh, I want to go back to that. Cause it was so much, fun. I had some cool moments, uh, some really cool like adventures and stories to be told, but I didn't like love it. No. So I know obviously you made history, uh, in that show. Um, we won't need to go into that, but, uh, I am generally curious when you tell two people that you love them, is that a, th I, I mean, the whole premise of the bachelor to me is very interesting too, because I've, for example, always, I've never, I've never experienced that phenomena of having super strong romantic feelings for two people at once, but I know too many people who have. Mm -hmm. And I think, and on one hand, it seems pretty simple, like love is not a finite thing. And so, and obviously we have 
uh, say get on a platonic level, you don't have just one friend. You, your heart cares about many people, mm -hmm. right? When you are on that though, do you, is the, is the sort of tearing of the heart and being torn like that, is that because of the, the way it's all done and sort of the time frame and the, the, I guess, you know, concentrated time period that you have to decide that? Or do you just generally, did you just find yourself in a situation where at that time you're just like, wow, I'm, I'm really wrestling because I see just, I have really strong feelings for two people and there's nothing unusual about that. I mean, there's a couple different factors. One is uh, even today, like with my fiance, I feel like I've hit a home run. Like, I don't know how I've not only proposed to her, but she said, yes, you're the guy I want to spend the rest of my life with. Um, we're gonna come, but we're gonna come back to how yeah. you how you met her. But the show, like that show, was full of like people way out of my league, and so you're dating a bunch of phenomenal humans, uh, and you're getting to hear their hearts and um, have great memories with them and travel the world with them, and uh, it's all on the basis of hey, is this a possible connection that will last a lifetime? And so I think the fat one of the factors is who's there. Like I had two people at the end that I cared deeply about. Uh, I don't think uh, for some it was that shocking. I think people understood it. I think a lot more people understood it than maybe what social media wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, but it also has to do with the fact that, yeah, you are in a concentrated environment. You're in an environment that's cultivating love, that's cultivating connection, that's trying to uh, assist in finding a love story at the end. And so as long as you're staying open to it, as long as you haven't committed, hey, I'm, I'm going to be with you and we're going to – then I think the heart is open, you know? And I think uh, I've heard a lot of stories of how that you do get in conflict with that. You know, somebody's just dating people and all of a sudden they find themselves with two people that they really care about and they can't choose between them because they care about them both so much. I think that just happens in life. For me, it just happened to happen on national TV <laughs> in an environment that, you know, was kind of supporting that and wanting that to happen. Yeah, no, that's uh, it is <sighs> It is interesting because I see the, so the drop, when you see people's, you know reactions and you see like i i i, I saw because my friends would send me clips of uh like colton sees and stuff when mm -hmm. when you see the main contestants like really emotionally um distraught like that's a real thing they're really going through it on the show oh yeah i yeah. mean it's it's funny we you know one of the most common questions that you'll get asked once you're on the show is how scripted is it and my always answer to them is like well it's not scripted at all well, for a couple of reasons one it's just not two if you thought you could have that many people for 20 seasons that you could find that would be that good of actors <laughs> that would convince people year over year over year that this is real and that love is real and that those tears are real, then like that's super impressive. Uh, it's just a bunch of humans trying to figure it out. And it's also a bunch of people that have had pains and sorrows and scars and maybe they're in a weak place in life and they get put on the show and all of a sudden people are paying attention to them and people are treating them like they matter for the first time in a while. And all of a sudden they, they're getting attention from the opposite sex that they haven't felt in a long time. And you start to like really open up. You start to really dive into it. And I think it, it has been a place where a lot of hurt people find love and a lot of hurt people don't find love. But a lot of hurt people show their emotions from the, on the show. And we, I guess, have for 20 plus years found entertainment in watching it. Yeah. I know this. I was looking back at the. I was doing some research, going when did the first season air? And I think it was two thousand two, yeah. and the OG, uh, the OG uh, Bachelor is I think fifty one now. Yeah. Uh, are you all on like a Discord server? Is there like an mm. alumni network that you all like? You know, I and wish. are the old Bachelor and Bachelorettes like? Are they like uh, cup premarital counseling? You know, mm -hmm. and offering their sage wisdom. There actually is. I just found out about this. Um, there's a text thread that all of the old, like every Bachelorette since the beginning is on wow like they all text each other they bring in the the newly announced bachelorette as soon as her first show starts and they show her support the bachelors we don't do that for each other like i might know like four or five of them well <laughs> man that's cool i don't know what that says yeah about, hey but, support each other yeah you know um so were you you've been very open about your faith i really appreciate that uh were you were you a christian prior to going on the show yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you have any? Uh, did you have any reservations about doing The Bachelor as a Christian? No, not at all. None. Okay. Can you elaborate on that? Because I, I, I could see from the outside someone going, "Wait, it seems to be just like a, you know, hormone crazy, drama centric, you know, like just a sort of potentially a, like a lust race." And on the other hand, obviously you went into it and maintained fidelity to your faith. So 
Can you t like walk us through like why that might be a incorrect characterization? Well, I don't know if it could. Be, I don't know if I can like s stand up and say it's an incorrect characterization of the show because each season's different. Totally. Each lead is different. Each person's different, and their intentions to go there. Um, but for me, uh, a couple of different things. One is uh, Jesus doesn't just show up in my life when like everything's easy and simple. The second part is I needed adventure. Um, I, I was being called into a new story. I was being called into shake life up a bit. I was working as a software salesman at the bottom of a basement, incredibly depressed, um, like clinically, um, feeling very purposeless and not really knowing where to turn. Hmm. Um, and so the show calls and they say, here, here's this new thing. And I, I, I remember the prayer I prayed was, God, I'm not smart enough to figure out if this is a good decision or not. Because it feels weird. Like, it, the whole thing's wild. I'm going to be on national TV potentially in two months. So help me out here. Um, by the advisement of my friends, my family, or my boss at the time, t somebody tell me not to go. Like, let one of them tell me this isn't a good decision. All of them who love me dearly uh, and do share the same faith as me, most of them, uh, said, you should do this, Ben. Like, this is a thing that you should hmm. try. So at that point, if I got the, you know consultation of the people that know me love me the best and want to see what's best for me and they said you should do it do it and so um and and like i said jesus doesn't just show up in the, the in the simple moments or the moments that feel right uh i believe that that god was with me the whole time um in a way that really supported me and helped me through this process and maybe ways that other people didn't have that support or um god to lean back on and to pray to and to uh, filter thoughts through and to filter conversations through. Mm. So, um, no, uh, I didn't doubt it. I've, I've definitely received my fair share of criticism from the church, uh, and from Christians about going on the show. Uh, that's Christians have been the, the toughest. To I was going to ask, with. so you've gotten more criticism from, uh, the church than people who were, so you, you didn't feel that at all from people who, from a secular standpoint, were like, Oh, oh there's sure, a Christian yeah. on the show. I mean, criticism. Yeah. It's not like isolated, but Criticism from people um, who uh, believe similar things I believe uh, hurt the most. Christians can hurt me the most. I believe Christians can hurt Christians the most. Mm. And so those stung the deepest. Mm. Um, and so, no, it's not just isolated. Like, criticism spreads out. Support spreads out also, right? Um, it, it, you know, I've gotten a lot of support from people within the church. But I was 25 years old. Uh, I was uh, trying to figure out life. Uh, I get flung into this new environment of uh, attention uh, and people caring for me. And all I needed was some people to rally around me and say, hey, we've got you. Like, we're not going to leave your side. Um, and I really expected that from the church. Like, I really thought that would be a group that really stood firm in that. And I felt that at times from some people. But I also saw the opposite of that as well. Hmm. No, I appreciate that. That's that's cool to see. It's, you never know when you watch TV. You just never you don't know what's really going on, you know, behind the scenes. How have things been for uh, you and uh, your fiance during this whole COVID season? And you guys had to postpone your wedding, right? Ish. Yeah, Ish. we got uh, Ish. We uh, we got engaged in March of uh, 2020, and uh, about two weeks after we got engaged, we started planning for a wedding. And it was pretty clear at that point, we could plan for a wedding uh, and probably not have it. And so we tried to pick a date that was gonna be far enough along that COVID uh, maybe wouldn't be in consideration. Now that's still yet to be seen. But in addition to that, her brother plays professional baseball. So mm -hmm. he, if all goes well, is busy till October. Okay. So we pushed it back to November. So we're gonna get married in November. And actually now we're kind of looking at it and it's been a great, it's been great. Being engaged for a year and a half has been a lot of fun. Telling people you're engaged. Um, you know, Jessica still gets to play with her ring and show that off and people are still interested. So it's been a fun season, but uh, we kind of planned it to not be, just because of COVID, to not be an immediate, you know, wedding. And how did you meet Jess again? I messaged her on Instagram. You slid into the DMs. I did. I was uh, at iHeart Music Festival in Las Vegas, and all my buddies and I were sitting around a cabana, and they all date well. Like they feel, I feel like they're really good at dating and meeting people. And uh, and so I was asking, them, how do you meet all these people that you go on dates with, and how does that play out? And they go, oh, we just message them on Instagram. You see their picture, you message them. Do 
you do that? And I was like, I've never done that. That feels wild. And they go, it's, no, it's so much easier because if they're not inter interested in you, they don't message you back. So you feel no like hurt. I'm like, ah, all right. Well, uh, two months later, I was at a fundraiser in Nashville, Tennessee, and I saw Jessica's picture on the, on the location tag of the hotel I was staying at. She was over at the hockey game. I said, that girl's beautiful. Uh, she's gorgeous. And so I screenshotted the picture because like, now comes the creepy part. Yeah. Like now comes the message. And so I held on to it for a few months and uh, finally uh, saw the picture again and said, I'm just going to message her now. What do I have to lose? And I did. And we've never stopped talking since. Uh, three weeks later, she flew out to Denver. Um, Whoa. All yeah, right. Yeah. So we uh, it, it's been amazing. I mean, it's wild that that message could lead. And I still have the message saved um, could lead to, you know, the person What was the original like, message. Do we know? Uh, so it was something along. It was actually I was I, I took a lot of time on it. You got um, it, of course. But I, I, if I remember, it was like, I hello, don't ask too many questions about how I know you because that's only going to make this conversation weird. Um, <laughs> you, you said hello, don't ask questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like Liam Neeson and Taken. Like, <laughs> look where it got me. Maybe maybe I was onto something because then I said, if you're single, uh, and you're ever in Denver, I'd love to take you on a date. If you're not single, then please just see this uh, message as a compliment. And she said, I'm single, but I'm, I've never been to Denver. And I said, well, that's a start. Wow. All right. Well, folks, if you find yourself single, advice from the former bachelor himself is slide into those DMs, right? I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. All Big right. supporter. Would you be willing to consult on my Instagram then and see what we can do? Yeah. One of my favorite things, I don't have many single buddies anymore, but one of my favorite things to do back in the day was to message people for them because that hmm. le had, felt like it had less risk. Like you could be pretty ridiculous in your comments, and then you could blame you could if all else fails, you'd be like, "I'm so sorry, my friend Ben was just being ridiculous." A hundred percent. Yeah, he was at his cabana in Vegas, as one does. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of like weird questions, like, "Do you most relate with a lizard or a caterpillar?" Interesting. <laughs> do you see where the game's coming from now? Do you see yeah. why I was the bachelor? Yeah, I do. I'm, yeah. I'm just curious if you actually ever asked a woman that question. No, I have. Okay. Yeah, there's wow. emojis for both. Great. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's good to know. Um, last question, and then we got to head to the actual mountains here. Yeah. Um, what are you praying for right now these days? What's what's occupying your prayer life? Good question. Um, it is a lot of like uh, I say this cautiously um, because I am not a fan. Uh, I, I just don't want to come off as the holiest of people, but I'm on my hands and knees a lot right now. Like pounding my chest for answers, um, asking for clarity, uh, asking for peace, uh, asking for joy, uh, asking to like kind of divorce from the desire to still be famous because I don't really want to be. Do you wrestle with that a lot? Is that something? Oh yeah. Yeah. I wrestle with it a lot. It's, an, uh, it's a big ego issue. It's a lot of pride wrapped around it. Um, so I pray often like release that desire from me. I will take that burden from you. You got so it. You know, right? I'll so hand it to you, you gonna, gladly. Is this the anointing passing through the, the COVID protective wall? Yeah, uh, there is a wall there. All right, you saw this, folks. Clean. The laying on of hands, the anointing has now transferred. Elijah, Elisha. That's right. <laughs> Elisha, Elisha, Elijah. So, yeah, that's the prayer right now. Is uh, It's just a lot of, like, crying out and desiring. And then also I'm praying right now a lot for to be a good husband. Cool. Um, I don't know how to do that. So, like, I'm praying that, like, as I read and as I ask questions, as I look at my fiance in the eyes, I'm learning something along the way that will allow me to step into that new season being like the po best possible partner I can be. That's awesome. Well, Benjamin Higgins, um, I have a little surprise for you. Um, uh, I would like to give you a gift as we give to everybody out here. I didn't know I was getting gifts. You're gonna get a gift. I like gifts. If it's chocolate, I'll be really high. Oh, oh wow. Wow. That's a really nice looking one, too. Right? I know. And I, I wish I had taken it out of the plastic, but, you know, I needed to protect this. So this is a rose by any other name. But I honestly have enjoyed this so much. I would like to have you back on the show. So I'm giving you a rose. I'll accept your uh, invitation to come back and camp. And I'm glad you kept it in the plastic. It keeps it from the elements that That's exist right. outside. And thanks for having me. Absolutely.
Thanks for joining us, folks. If you want to help us out, and we're confident you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel. And if you ever feel like just listening to these, you can check us out on all major podcast streaming platforms by just searching for I Went Camping With. And there, you should also subscribe. Thanks again, folks.